And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm pursuing what I believe is like what I want to do. And I've had a lot of, you know, deals that on the table didn't look so good. And then they kind of revisited and they fell on my lap again. And I had, you know, success with that. But everything is an opportunity, whether it's a winner or a loser. I mean, you build relationships. Some things don't work out. Listen, not everyone's going to be successful at what they do. Um, you know, you can look at me and saying, well, if I lost the Olympia, I finished second to last at the first one. Why the hell did I go back to do it again? I mean, you got to go through learning curves and, and, you know, failures are sometimes setting you up for the biggest advantages in life. And that goes back to the second place finishes at the Mr. Olympia. I mean, shit, if I didn't have those, I might not have worked so hard to get the first. Yeah. Um, we mentioned uh, some of the training, but you mentioned to me at lunch that you uh, worked out four times a day. Um, I would imagine that's kind of like coming down the stretch is like, is that for a month? Is that for eight weeks? How long did you work? That out? was 16, like 16 weeks training for a competition. Holy I mean, shit. that's, that's a long, that's 16 a long 16 weeks, time. Andrew, training four times a day. Dude, no way. <laughs> two, two, two cardio sessions, two weight sessions. What a, what a fucking boring life, huh? It, it worked out. Well, it worked out because <laughs> I was winning most of those things. I mean, very rarely did I lose. I mean. Do you have to be boring to be a bodybuilder in some way? You know what, man? Like, I think. I think you've got to have a very simple mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be social. You can't be out doing a lot of other activities. Uh, some people argue this. Some people will be listening to this or watching this live and think, you know, oh, I go out and do, you know, what do things with my family and stuff. Yeah. I mean, listen, it depends on your mindset. My mindset is, you know, as Mr. Olympia was like, when I trained for competitions, man, there was no world. I shut everything out. So you put on the blinders and you have tunnel vision on what that ultimate goal is. And I didn't, I didn't want to go back after 16 and like 16 weeks and win or lose the title and say, I should have done or could have done this. That's why I did it the way I did for that 16. But once the 16 weeks was over, man, I lived my life. I mean, listen, man, I partied, I went out, I did, you know, I had, you know, after I was married, I had girlfriends and, you know, I hung out with friends. I became more social. Uh, I traveled all around the world and. You know, I've been to some of the best places. I live in Vegas, man. I mean, was it on. ever hard to get back to it uh, when you did that? You know, when you kind of let. The, you the know? only time it was hard is when I, you know, I got divorced in 2011 and I tore my bicep that year and, you know, my dog died and, you know, whatever. It just, you know, it was the shit year. Yeah, it was terrible. But, you know, and then I planned to come back in 12, but I had a bicep surgery. So it kind of sidelined me. It took a year for recovery for that. And then I came back in 13 and I, I kind of got my ass handed to me. I was, you know, sixth, which was the worst placing in over 12 years. <clears throat> and I realized, holy shit, I thought I was at that level again, but I, I really wasn't fully back because I just, I was traveling a lot. I was, you know, I had a big tour bus. We were running with the supplement brand and I was traveling all around on a tour bus. And, you know, I thought I was getting enough meals and I wasn't as dedicated. And that was probably, you know, the biggest eye opener for me. And listen, I partied in between that lost in 11 and you know after getting divorced and all that stuff it was like you know you go through that phase right and then i had to like get back down to business and i just wasn't the same person man i didn't have you know my ex-wife was a huge backbone for me and uh you know when she wasn't there day to day to day it, it kind of affected me you know so when you you know i it's think like, you mentioned at lunch you were with her for like 20 years yeah 23 years man yeah. so it was like you had that structure and, you know, I really didn't know sometimes, like, I thought I was doing the right thing, but it just, it's a comfortability thing. Like when you're training for a show, everything has to be in sequence. And I think now looking back, I just was missing some of those, those moving parts. That's all. How do you deal with comments? You know, like, uh, you're retired from, uh, getting on the stage and, uh, I think you're, uh, what'd you say? You're 235 right now. Something like that. Yeah. Obviously you're, you're, you don't look uh nearly as big as as he used to right mm -hmm. so how do you deal with uh does that ever bother you does it ever bother you somebody's like oh you look smaller you look nothing like you used to look or nah man i got four i got four sandals on a on some <laughs> pedestals at home and a lot of medals to prove it you right. know so for me even if you get out of shape someone's like oh you look fat doesn't yeah, any, of it, any of it bug you i or? haven't been out of fat i haven't been out of shape much so for me it's like just you know smaller yes i'm trying to downsize and that's my goal i mean remember it's it's me on me that's not i'm not trying to impress anyone i still want to be fit i still i want to look athletic like in it athletic i'm is, gonna tell you right now it ain't gonna happen a lot <laughs> athletic is a lot of opinions for a lot of people yeah. right but 
you look like SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> 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 That's the physique. Yeah. One of the one of the questions that came in was actually like, "What's your diet looking like these days?" That you are trying to slim down a little bit or size down, I should say. I mean, I have you know, I own a meal service, uh, Mega Fit Meals, so I do that a lot of that. But it's still the chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. uh, I still eat the same breakfast, the egg whites and the oatmeal for breakfast, a couple of eggs. Uh, today was I was a little steak for lunch, which I don't usually eat a lot of steak to be honest. I've kind of cut red meat out of my diet. Uh, most of the time but I eat a lot less I eat half as much as I used to so mm. I eat about six ounces of meat and probably like uh, 40 grams of carbs per meal that probably and, feels a lot better right well I, I listen I didn't feel too bad at, at 300 pounds to be honest I mean I was pretty agile and I trained and I mean obviously visually it's much different and the clothing fits a lot different you know and the styles have changed since then I used to wear big baggy clothes 5x shirts and shit you know it's just like that's much more comfortable and I'm not as hot all the time <laughs> that's for sure you know when you're big and heavy your like body that, temperatures through yeah the roof. you're you're red as shit everyone thinks you have high blood pressure you know <laughs> and I never had high blood pressure but I sure looked like I did you know that's for sure was there uh during your uh competitive years were there things that you had to avoid like somebody might be hey let's go uh skiing or let's well go the do funny this thing is that. is i i signed an agreement with muscle tech you know back in 03 and i was on the contract until uh 2012 and uh i had like no extreme sports in that contract so i had atvs i bought in 2005 and i i was like i grew up on the farm riding atvs that's what i love to do those suckers sat in my garage shit. I, I've probably ridden them probably three hours since I bought them. And I take them up and down the street every once in a while. I put them on my social media, but that's about the extent that I go. I, I should start riding more. But, you know, I just, a lot of things I couldn't do. Downhill skiing, I used to do a lot. I, I used to water ski. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to jump out of airplanes at this point or anything <laughs> like that, man. I'm trying to do anything to salvage my life. You know what I mean? I worked my ass off to get where I am at. So, you know, I used to ride motorcycles all the time, but for me like it's just so damn dangerous now but like the texting and shit like i'm afraid to ride a motorcycle like i rode when no yeah. one was texting and everyone if you pull up to anyone next to a, a stoplight everyone's texting right <laughs> it's fucking terrifying yeah smokey's on a motorcycle he might get oh yeah out. You watch out what do you ride a, a sport bike or a... okay that's all right that's good yeah i had i had harleys i had you know i had gsxrs I just sold a Ducati, actually. I had a Ducati, but it was more just a showpiece in my garage. Someone actually needed the money, so I actually bought it from them, and I thought I was actually going to ride it. I took it to the gym once, and it was, like, summertime in Vegas, and the shit was so hot, bro. I, like, <laughs> I can't I can't ride this thing on daily, you know? You have to wear a helmet in Vegas, you know? Yeah. I, I wanted to ride with no helmet on, but I was, like, kamikaze like that. I didn't give a shit, you know? What was I, the uh, coolest thing that ever happened to you in bodybuilding, whether it be something that you won or something that happened, you know, due to circumstances of you uh, bodybuilding, competing? Ah, oh, man, like, you know, I told, I told you guys at lunch that story, like, Stallone, you know, he was my idol. And, you know, to meet him, I met him and Van Damme, John claude Van Damme, you know, watching Bloodsport all those years. And those two guys were like the reason I got in and I was able to meet those guys and they both said the same exact thing to me. They told me they were fans. So for me, that's like mind blown, like crazy because yeah. like those are your two idols. And, you know, I met Arnold and I mean, he was like obviously won the Arnold Classic a bunch of times. And, you know, talking to him is pretty wild considering I was watching him and Commando and all that shit. And, uh, you know, I visited some of the craziest places. I mean, I've been in Peru and, you know, to visit these orphanages with kids and be able to bring them gifts and all that. I mean, it's bodybuilding's taken me all around the world. And I never would have been able to probably do that, nor wanted to, if it wasn't for bodybuilding. Because I surely when I retire, I'm not going to travel much because I've, I've flown millions of airplane miles. I mean, I... By the beginning of from January this year until March, I already have flown a hundred thousand miles. Holy shit! So I'm still I'm still traveling a tremendous amount, and I'm so sick of fucking planes. You can imagine, like, yeah. you know what I mean. And I'm just sick of rude people and <laughs> oh, yeah. and just yeah, the whole thing, just the airports and the delays and like that's what ruins it for me. Like, if you said Jay, if you could go anywhere in the world, if I could just like like zoom myself there and get there and like light speed i would go anywhere on the planet but you're the talking about teleportation yeah my <laughs> the travel time it's like it's unreal man like i can't take the flights anymore it it's just brutal. kills me because if you think about it that's the worst waste of your life you could ever do is sitting <laughs> on an airplane you know it's a killer and even just to get on the plane 
You know, just the whole act, yeah. the whole thing is a big pain. And in it's ass. like you can only watch so many movies over and over. I mean, I, I like to watch Narcos. Like, that's one of my favorite right. shows. And I'm watching Billions right now. That's like a show I like to watch. 